it's Amélie. Um, today, for the um, just practicing, we're going to continue the B minor flute sonata by Bach. So uh, last time we did the first movement, and now we're going to start with the largo. Um, so yes, it's a it's a live stream. So if you have any question while we're doing it, you can put them in. And so I'm going to start with that. It's very slow. It's in six eight. Usually six eight are two beats of dotted quarter. But here I'll count it a little bit more in, in six beats because it's really uh, so slow. But rem remembering that the first and the fourth are really the strong beats of the measure. Okay, let's try this. say when you have those little grace notes um, that are 16th notes like the small 16th notes um, you play them on the beat in baroque music not before the beat like in some other types of music it's really ta da so if I put the metronome let's say what's what would be this here oh, we don't need that here maybe 66 that's not bad That's a bit too fast too. Let's see, maybe a bit slower. Bum, 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 bum. You see there, measure five. You you have this. Um, um, it's the same thing that you had a lot in the first movement at one point. I think some. Um, oh God, <laughs> last time too, I was looking for that word. Um, no, whatever, it's going to come back to me. Um, so you start on the, on the soft, the, the, oh my God, what's going on? You, you start on a, no, <laughs> the opposite of strong. I don't know the word is just coming in French today. I don't know. The weak. You start on the weak. I'm so sorry. You start on the weak part of the beat and you end on the strong part of the beat. And so you have to make it sound like, like this. Because it's not... I mean, let's say... Not the same thing. Do you feel the difference? I'll put the metronome so you can hear it. So it says the sources leave it open to whether G sharp or G should be played. So you can choose because some, I guess when they found the manuscripts, they, it wasn't clear if it was a G sharp or a G natural. Some sources are diverging on that point. So you just pick. I like it with G natural. It's cool. I think I'll choose G natural. When you have a lot of those um, 30 second notes, um, you can make little lines uh, where the beats are so that you, because sometimes I hear students that, you know, when there's a lot of notes, they add notes or they remove notes because they get lost in the beats because the, the pulse gives you a structure and like you know that you can have only a certain amount of notes in that pulse, in that beat, because if you're trying to manage one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten notes, it's impossible. Your brain can't make a group of ten. But if you make groups of two to four, that's possible. So let's say at measure five on the last 
the last uh, beat of, uh, of dotted quarter note, you go pam pa da one, one ta 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 da ta ta one two three four, one two and one two three four, one two three four, one two three four. Then you won't add notes, you won't get confused rhythmically. The strong notes, the notes that are on the beats, will be on the beats. So make little lines, and make sure that uh, you do the right amount of notes because that happens more than you think okay um i'll go from measure five change the rhythm there but it's on the beat remember those ta -da -ta -da. another thing you might have noticed at measure six I keep my pinky on the A it's easier because I just did that trill and the A with the, the, the when you put the pinky on the A it sounds more open and a bit and it's a bit easier for intonation too. And it's gonna be smoother going G sharp A, G sharp again, than if I go There's more risk of having a little in-between note, bloop, a little bloop, if I don't do it like that. So I do it like that, but it's, uh, you decide. Then you have a um, repeat of that section when you repeat, you're allowed to add some, some notes, change some things, improvise a little bit. You can write your, your improvisation. Um, I don't know. I don't, I never chose any, so. something like that so I added a trill here so here I added little notes there those are ideas but listen to versions and just decide you can also change the, um, um, you can play the first time a bit louder, the second time a bit softer. You can do some types of little modifications so it's not exactly the same thing twice. Let's say here. write them down um, so I don't have to go through it every time um, but I'm not gonna write them down today um, also I'm not playing from the same version that's on the screen so if you see that I'm not slurring exactly the same way that's possible because I'm choosing my own slurs and that also I write down so if you take a 
Earth text edition, which is Earth text means it's just the just the indications that the composer put. The editor didn't add anything. Then you can put your own slurs. If it's not Earth text, it means the editor chose some slurs already for you, but you could change them if you want. This they're just the editor's choice. So second part. open in the keep the mouth open there <laughs> we sometimes get intimidated by big intervals like that G sharp or a G natural on that last G of the measure of the measure 13. I'll do G natural. the grace note it's not a it's not a 16th it's an eighth note so you'll play it as an eighth note the reason why uh, Bach didn't write um, simply an eighth note followed by a quarter note and wrote it like that is that he wants to show you that it's an appoggiatura that it's an that the E is not part of the chord we have that D chord uh, and on top, he puts an E. One second. And you, it, it's, uh, it's a tension, and it gets resolved on the D. So he wants you to push a little bit on that tension. So... So that you hear that it's being resolved there. Then you can repeat it again and add little things. Uh, let's see. Yeah, when you have thirds like that, it's easy to just add a note, but. make an arpeggio instead of uh, what's written.
합니다. 120 per quarter note it's equivalent to 60 per half note so you do it like this then you increase you get to 80 per quarter note uh, per half note sorry don't forget you'll need double tongue in there at the at the at the end and if you want to be comfortable with it you have to practice it like when so um, start doing the double tanging even when you're practicing a bit slower maybe not when you're practicing super slow but when you're getting to a certain speed start using double tanging so that you get used to it we also have videos about double tanging on the channel so you can look up for that if you don't know what it is or how to do it so let's go measure eight let's say I'm now at and you, you increase gradually the speed like that. So now I'm at 80 per half note. Okay, so that's it. And then you increase, you increase. And then let's say you go to 100 per half note. that's uh, that you keep it like that the metronome but the way you feel it is one two one two so like my foot or my toes would go one two one two so really I feel like a downbeat and an upbeat it's important because uh, it's really at that speed it's it's how you should feel it rhythmically okay 
but I want to play that fast for now. I'll go and do it all at 80. That's not the real speed, so yeah. a trill I don't know if I should that's a decision I would make later but uh, I don't know I thought it could be cool but I'll go back from 24 you see here it sounds like a little steps 20 uh, 6 27 28 same thing, just one step above each time. And maybe I, but also when I'll play that full speed, I will need less air. That's just math mathematical. But I'd say I start at the uh, pick up from uh, 38. natural and the next measure it's C sharp so you have to be careful with that one second I'm not happy with my sound right now mm. oh, it still is okay for today I'll start from um, pick up of 64 one Ah, F sharp. Okay, careful. 
I know I say it all the time, but when you uh, make a mistake, just write it down right away so you're not playing that mistake two, three, four, five, ten times. And then it's really stuck like that. You really learned it so well that it's difficult to undo that, to unlearn the mistake and relearn the good notes. So um, sometimes it's just uh, we're a bit too proud and we're like, no, I don't need to write it. I know it's that. But then uh, we lose a lot of time being proud like that. trill there uh, always start your trills on the top note in baroque music I would start it super slowly and then increase and then stop on that on the A sharp uh, because that's like a um, um, broken cadence no how do you call that uh, this in half cadence in French it's half cadence you call it like that too Half cadence. When you stop on five, you stop on the dominant chord. Like it's not finished. You know something else is coming. And then the allegro is coming. So you change the beat. Now you're in um, 12, 16. So it's four beats of dotted eight notes. Pa, 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 pa. You're never on the beat. You're always on. So you, it has to be super clear. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. On which of the three notes that are potentially in that beat you are. So one, three, one, two, three, 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 one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. You see, I, I did that from pick up of 84 to end of 86 it has to be clear to you let's say I do um, 88 one two three one two three one two three one three one three okay yeah you can do that and always hear one two three one two three in your head even when you're not doing them if I do the beginning Three, one, two, three, 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 one, 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 three, one, two, three, one, three, one, two, three, one, three. Okay. Uh yeah. And then it's gonna go well. If you have really a lot of difficulty, sometimes some students what they do is they repeat the note. So they go. And then once that's com comfortable for them, they, they do the, the slur. So that can be a way to uh, get the hang of it. Okay, let's say... It's fast, but I'm not going to play it at the real speed because I won't be ready for that yet. I'll go at 80. That's comfortable for me. Thank you. 
to do. Um, I'll go from 92, the, uh, and I, the um, pick up from 92. also pick my slurs um i think at 94 i like that so that the d c sharp d that's coming back uh, four times is clear and the other the other part is also just same thing going one step down each time at 94 so Like two elements that I want to make sound distinct from each other and then 96 try not to vibrate too much because it's baroque music and we uh on traverso we didn't really do any vibrato but it's a mod modern flute so uh, if i feel like i need to on a note or two i i do it but i don't um i'm not trying to vibrate let's put it like that i'm trying to do as little as possible on the vibe on the vibrato um front okay so one one oh two So we have that uh, sharp and then natural and then sharp. So let's write it down. For the E, I mean. I was adding a note. so fast that you won't be able to add that many notes there um, you could add a couple of trills when you do the repeat you could um, change some dynamics uh, let's see you see here too you have that and then on the top you have little scale going down. So that's two different elements. The taha, 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 I slur. And then I make the other one come out a little bit more. That's nice, all detached at 87. cool 
bum 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 bum. I just add an F sharp D and an E and a G at 87. And then. I could add a note. I could add like a D there maybe. I would have to check the chord, but I think it would work. Just add one instead of ta da I go ta da dum, and the next one ta da dum. That could be that. There too, I could add an A between a G and a D at the 96. That's nice. I added A. Yeah, so just these little things you can add on the second time. Just a little pyong, uh, repeating the F sharp and slurring it to the E sharp on 109 could work. And then I could just repeat the F sharp there. That's better. F sharp, E sharp, F sharp. E sharp, which is a F. Okay, now, that last part. <laughs> okay. You could add a trill there. Okay. Uh, but I forgot to count, so I would have to do it again. Remember to start the trill on the B here.
breaths as much as you can because that's again like if you don't plan your breathing um bad things will happen later <laughs> because like you need to be sure that you can do it <clears throat> so it's always a work in progress because you start as, at a certain speed and then you you speed up so you need less breaths but then you know just erase them and move them around um it's it's always like uh research to find it you know find um but i really advise to write them down it's so helpful okay so let's say i start uh 135 so i can take that breath slowly once because there's a lot of stuff there okay i'll write down my slur so i like doing three detached three slur at 136 137 132 eight beginning but then i like doing tum -pa -dum -tum, having that e sharp f sharp slur together so you hear it comes back twice okay again uh, so you could also add stuff or if you don't have time because like it's so fast that it's difficult to add things like I said you can change the dynamics change some little things but let's say if I started again try to do it that could work I guess or maybe not all of them you see I added a there I could add an F sharp there. Little things. Now that's too fast to do that. Um, I'm not sure. Now that's kind of boring because it's an arpeggio that just goes up. Mm. 
Yeah, that's a good idea. So I changed the melody, but I kept that same chord of E, e minor. And I just played a broken arpeggio there. G, E, B, G, E, B, G, and then E. So at 133, it goes like this. but I could do it more maybe. Maybe one on two, yeah, like that. Hmm, maybe I could do something there. could be nice. It's just a B minor arpeggio, so a little F sharp between the E and the G at uh, 146, something like that. But again, I would listen to some good versions, see what people are doing, and then play again. Um, it's not like I don't pick, I don't make the choices right away, first time I practice it. Also, when you play that, it's pretty fast, the, the final tempo. I would advise to use triple tonguing when you want to, uh, for the detached parts, triple tonguing is just the same as double tonguing, but instead of doing taka taka, so double tonguing is for when you subdivide beats in two, four, stuff like that. So it's taka taka groups of two. And triple tonguing is just, you group by three, because like here, beats are subdivided in groups of three. So it's one, two, three, one, two, three, so um, the ka is in the middle and you start and finish with the ta, ta, ka, ta. And there's also videos about that on our channel. So you can look for that. So. Can I ask you a question? Did you want to answer some? Yeah. Lisa just wants to know, uh, would love to know what books you recommend after completing all the Wu Bank books. Uh, or what studies do you recommend after the Wu-Bank books? And also, how to study airflow in the mouth? Okay, so I'm not super familiar with like all the Wu-Bank books. I think I only have the first one. They're similar to the Kavali, but a little bit lower. Like, a little bit. They're eventually books three and four. Four doesn't exist anymore, really, Wu-Bank. It's hard to get. You can okay. find the fourth, but... Those are advanced, but Kabali, yeah. they're similar. Well, I guess like you could start working on um, for technique on exercise like in Tafanel and Gobert, the 17 daily exercises or Rye Shirt could yeah. be nice books for technique that yeah. you could look into. I'm also working on a technique book that's gonna be... Also an intermediate book as well. Uh, if you're finished all four books of Wubank, you should take the intermediate book from us. I'm not sure, maybe that maybe would be a bit easy. If you finished all that, yeah. Maybe I'd start on the next book, well, <laughs> but yeah, um, so because too easy. beginner book would be too easy. The an intermediate, the beginning of it is not that advanced, but at the end, it's pretty mm -hmm. advanced. Um, yeah, so like studies you recommend, like yeah, studies I recommend. You can always get all the Cavalli books, Cavalli Volume One, Two, Three. Well, it's, then say our guide. 
It's written C-A-V-A-L-L-Y. Yeah, but right. we're also going to um, do our own editions of it, a lot of studies. I like the It's a Mignon from Garibaldi. They're super cute. There's also Berbivier studies. Uh, there's a lot of Anderson studies. But, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll do a guide on our Musigy.com. If you go on our website, Musigy.com, that's where you can buy our products. And we are going to add a lot of stuff there so that it's easier for people to find what they need and also have uh, good editions for a good price. So you can go and check there. And for people who are learning, I think our, I think that our um, methods are very good. I'm very proud of our methods. I worked hard on them and I think uh, you can learn a lot with them. And we had so many good comments from people all over the world who bought them. It's a great success. So I'm super happy about that. So thanks for everyone who buys them and learns with them. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. So, um, Ezra wants to know, do you have any advice on how to do quiet practice so you don't disturb neighbors? Oh yeah, you just go like this. It's like you don't... Um, That's still good practice. Yeah, because you're still practicing tonguing, fingering, and also the airstream is going. So it's just that you're not doing the embouchure the way you usually do. Like, you just go, Shh, kind of a Shh, type of thing. Oh, there was another question before from the previous person, how to practice uh, air speed in the mouth or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like, in the mouth, you should just think that air speed, it comes from the belly, more like a the air is pushed with the abdominals <laughs> but in your mouth just try to leave your tongue out of the way at the bottom of the mouth if possible keep your uh keep your the back of your mouth open like uh, you can make space between your your back teeth or just think that you have an egg in your mouth or something like that or so that it's open and it can resonate inside and it's pretty much that. Just make sure you're not doing any, like that it can travel easily. And then you don't have to work. It's ma mainly a not doing more than a doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Anne wanted to know, so the intermediate book of, uh, is more advanced than the Wubank advanced. I don't yeah. think so. You don't think so? Okay, so there you go. I don't think that our... I, I'm not super familiar with the Rubank Advanced, but I yeah. don't think our intermediate would be more advanced than the Rubank yeah. Advanced. Yeah. And then you I can learn pieces, you know, learn pieces. Don't learn only in a book like that. Mm -hmm. Go and check for repertoire yeah. and uh, so you have fun playing, you know? Yeah. Um, what else do we got here? Somebody wants you to try Prokofiev Sweets Mono. You played Prokofiev Sweets Mono in the past? Not on a. On a uh, in, in life. Yeah, yeah, I've played it in concert, yeah. but yeah, we could do a we could do a Prokofiev uh, just practicing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a gorgeous yeah, piece. Cool. Uh, is there a way? Is there a uh, Lupa wants to know? Is there a way to handle the air in your mouth for different uses? Hmm. Handle the air in your mouth. I'm not sure what that means. Handle the air in your mouth. Perhaps maybe it's the slow air versus fast air or the velocity, you know? Yeah, I think you're putting too much emphasis on the mouth because that's what we see uh, when we play. That's what we we think a lot comes from there, but so much comes from the air uh, system. Let's you're call it like, like that. Talking like volume and richness. Okay, so I wouldn't think of air. I would think of space in the mouth for the air. So if you're playing louder, you want to make more space. If you're playing softer, you want to make maybe... Um, you still want to have space in the back of the mouth, but maybe at the front you want to make it a bit more like... Um, so that it directs the air because you have less air, so you really want to direct it in a, in a specific spot. So. Let's say I'm playing loud. Everything's open. Because I have a lot of air coming out. When I'm playing soft here, I close a little bit because there's less air and I want it to be more 
um, still very precise on where it hits on the embouchure plate and also um, it's the same thing as a hose you have a lot of water you leave it open and you have less water you want the water to hit the same spot you put your thumb so it's the same thing here so I close here but it also closes my whole mouth so I go open soft loud soft so when I bring my jaw it changes the angle but it changes the the direction of air here in my mouth but the back stays open the back here I keep it I still think of uh, my soft palate as pretty high so that it can still resonate is that clear yeah and uh, one last question we didn't want to know how do you find the repertoire at your level you're studying at um, well, if you're studying in our, in our methods, it's all, there's repertoire with the, with the, um, with the level and it goes with the technique and the studies and everything is, has been thought out. Uh, if not, you can check, you know, all those, um, uh, Trinity College, things like that. They syllabus. have, they have a syllabus with choices of pieces per grade. So if you're grade two or three or four. Uh, or whatever grade you are and you can find pieces uh, that are your level and then maybe increase the level eventually so that you uh, challenge yourself um, they also they have books and if you're not sure of your level you can listen to our we have a video where I play all the with that level for you know ABRSM and for Trinity. yeah I have yeah for ABRSM and for Trinity so you can check and listen to it and be like oh I think I'm around that level and then that could be a, a way to do that, mm -hmm. to choose your pieces. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, like there's a lot of Buddhists talk about that. Uh, let's go back to that air thing. You know, okay. A lot of Buddhists, like especially like Buddhist nobles, they all talk about air moving in their mouths. Like it's air a, moving in your yeah. mouth. They talk about uh, where the air is moving in her mouth, and uh, when uh, she does when she does pigeon feet, it seems to be a lot different, a lot cooler for different flutes. So she was just curious. Maybe that verbiage is just not translatable. I, I don't know. I've never had a teacher talk to me about that, I think. Mm -hmm. Except, like, I think maybe there's a little bit of overthinking there that's going to make you uh, lose a lot of energy on that where it shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's that relevant, but maybe I'm just misunderstanding. Yeah. But I think it's... Um, the air just goes forward in your mouth. It's not going in circles. That would not work. Like, I don't know. I'm not a physicist, but like, it's not possible. It's not, there's not a, it's not waves. It's not, it's not the sea. It's just air going forward. Like, the only difference is like, you'll work on the airspeed if you want to achieve different things. If you play in a low register, you're going to use slower air. And if you play in the, so you're going to make more space and be more like if uh, you're blowing warm air in your in your hand <sighs> so it's not the same speed as <sighs> cold air that you're going to use in a higher register but air moving like the air i'd be curious to see but i don't see how the air could go in a wave like it goes in one direction i don't know i don't can it spin the air has to escape, so you're pushing air to escape. Yeah, you're just pushing the air. You're making a way in your, you're making like a corridor in your mouth so that the air goes out in that specific spot there. But mm. you still want to keep it. Yeah, even if I open a lot, it's still all moving forward. Yeah, because even circular breathing is not that. It's breathing through the nose back into the chamber. It's not. It's still air, always in one direction. In and out, in and out, in and out. Yeah. yeah. I think someone, so, someone, sometimes we say things in a very mysterious way, but I don't know. It's not mysterious or magical. Yeah, yeah. You just blow and move your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Playing the flute is pretty simple and if you think about it. That's why the Bose called it the simple flute. Yeah. <laughs> the Bose wrote the simple flute, which is a great book. But, uh, when I 
felt that I was good at playing the flute is when I realized how simple it was. It's not by overcomplicating things that you'll achieve better playing, but I, at, as you simplify things and you really, it's all about the basics. And once your basics are very strong, then that's it, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. It's not that complicated. Yeah. It's just the flute. So that's, uh, that's it for today. I hope this was helpful. And um, remember to go and check out our website, misogy.com, for our methods and we'll add stuff. I'm working on new products that I think will be very useful. And also uh, go and check out um, our Patreon. We have all our videos there that, that are ad free and you can um, contribute to our work by uh, subscribing there and having all, all that. And also, so like, thanks to everyone who does, it's amazing. And also, um, you know, give us a thumb, thumbs up and uh, like and subscribe and all those things to help our channel. And uh, yeah, I hope uh, this was helpful and see you next time.